Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell. I'm going to be talking about a shorter version of a larger video that I did on analyzing the genome of the coronavirus that's been released by China, which is called the novel coronavirus. So in that larger video, I went into detail on how to analyze the genome in a database called the NCBI database and looking at the whole genome which is about 30,000 um, nucleotides and what sections of the genome code what proteins and focused on looking at the replicase which helps with replicating the, the, the actual RNA. It's an RNA single-stranded virus but also creating the proteins it needs for its assembly within the infected cell. In the NCBI database, you can analyze the genome and compare it to other genomes using a, a piece of software called BLAST. When you run BLAST, you will notice that this Wuhan virus is 89% similar to the bat SARS virus, okay? And that, the, that code, that uh, genomic code ID is MG77293.1. And the description is bat SARS-like coronavirus, okay? And the reference comparison is obviously the Wuhan coronavirus. That number is MN90894.7.3. Now, this proves that the virus came from bat SARS. It also suggests that it did not come from snakes because when you run the blast, snake coronavirus similarities don't seem to exist. Now, when we look at the, when we look at the research question, did this come from a bioweapon? We can't say for sure, but there's some odd things when you look at this. When you see the picture that I'm showing, you'll see that the Wuhan virus is very similar to the bat SARS virus MG strand. And you will notice that there is a, a, um, a area on the genome which is left, the left side of the genome, the, the, uh, where we, we actually code for the replicase, which helps with the, the early the early production of proteins for the virus, the, the uh, turning the positive RNA strand into a negative RNA strand. So this replicase is extremely important and it's the biggest part of the genome. And it's the very first thing that is translated from the ribosomes in the infected cell. And, and the the that area starts at about 2 
166 and goes to about 21,000 out of a 30,000 nucleotide RNA sequence. Then on the other side of the genome is where the S protein is coded, which is around the 23,000 mark, okay? Now, when you take a look at the Wuhan virus, that genome has a different endonuclease coding region at around the 2000, a, a pretty large section, but you know, around a 2000 mark, I'll give you the closer number here. Two thousand mark to about four thousand mark, where it has a big chunk of code, of genomic code, for this replicase that most of the SARS viruses do not have, and. On the other side, around the 23,000 nucleotide mark, we have also code that the bat SARS virus that it's very similar to does not have. But other SARS viruses do have. very similar to what is classified as bat SARS strand genome NY, I'm sorry, KY417146.1. In this region, in this genome, it's bat SARS but it does not have this section for the replicase on the front end of the genome in the, one th the 2,000 to 4,000 range. But it does have most of the 3,000 range for the S protein which is the area that helps attach to receptors on human tissue in the, in the lung. And this is part of the reason why people are getting lower respiratory infections for, for uh, pneumonia. So we have a bat SARS-like virus that's a KY strain, strain that has the code for the S protein that is very, very, very similar to the code that is in the Wuhan virus. So the S protein's part, the actual part that hooks on to the epithelial tissue is SARS is a SARS-like, it's, it's SARS, it's bat SARS. The KY SARS does not have the code for a big chunk of the, the endonuclease. Most of these viruses have very similar code for the endonuclease. That's the majority of the, the common theme of the genome. But there's this section between 2,000 and 4,000 nucleotides in the front end of the genome where most of those SARS viruses do not have. So there's a big difference. But the bat SARS MG772933.1 does. 
So what, what does this mean? So this basically means this. Before the Wuhan virus, there was two strain, strands of bat SARS. And one was the MG strand, and the other one was the KY strand. The KY strand had a, the code for the S protein that the MG strand did not have. And the MG strand had code for the endonuclease, parts of the endonuclease that the KY strand didn't have. So by taking the M strand, the, the MG strand and the KY strand and putting them together, you have with some variation, you know, that's within the, the uh, endonuclease, but not that much variation, a little bit. So there's some natural selection going on. But if you take the missing pieces of, if you take the, the, the missing components of the MG and the KY and you put, and you put those two together, you get the, the Wuhan virus. So what does this mean? This means that we had a bat SARS virus that had a more robust endonuclease, or it, 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 had, it seemed like it had a more robust endonuclease, but not as strong of a S protein nuclease as some of the other SARS viruses. Okay, that's what the MG strand is. The KY strand didn't have as much of a robust endonuclease, but had a more robust S protein, so more affinity to the cells. Now we have two, in, two SARS-like components within Wuhan virus. So if we create this, this, um, this uh, question, we, we, we ask this question, is Wuhan virus a bat SARS virus? Yes, it's a combination between the MG strand and the KY strand. Is it from snakes? No, it doesn't seem like it was from snakes. Now, how was it transmitted? It was most likely transmitted from a bat, assuming that it was through nature and natural selection that this took place, which is a possibility, okay? And that it was at the market and the handler probably contracted it and then gave it to the, the, the public. Now, it, he may have been sick when he gave it to the public or it may be in his, in his system and he was able to, to pass it on. There's some debate on if there's an incubation period before, before um, it being transmittable. We don't know yet. So he could have been sick and passed it on to the public, or he may have just very recently received the, the, uh, the virus from the bat as he was handling it and passed it on to the public and didn't even know he was sick, and then later probably became sick. And then many, many people were able to contract this. But let's look at pro probability, okay? What is the probability that all most of the strain, most of the strains that, and you can research this for yourself. If you go to my larger video on this topic, I'll sh I show you exactly how to do this research. But if you if you look at it, um, the MG strand has the, ro the robust the robust uh, endonuclease, SARS-like endonuclease. Well, most of the strands other than that do not have that, that section. There's some that have pieces of it that are SARS, they're bat, that bat SARS. But a lot, of the, a lot of the bat SARS and other SARS coronaviruses do not have this this section of the 
2,000 to 4,000 sequence. Most of the most of the SARS or bat SARS genomes have a good chunk, if not most, of this 23,000 chunk section for the S protein. So it seems to me that what's the probability that all these would just happen in a natural environment? Okay, one, you have to have a virus that mutates. And you know, normally mutations are like single nucleotide mutations. There may be, you know, bits and pieces, maybe, you know, three nucleotides are missing or added, or, you know, there may be flips, you know, one nucleotide flips, you know, from a, a T to an A or, you know, some mistake takes place. But most of them are like one or two, maybe three differences, not big chunks, okay? Big chunks are what we, we would call um, uh, trans, transformations, okay, or transpositions. So it, it seems to me that there was a big evolution in the virus around the S section, which makes sense. It's a smaller section of the genome, but it is a big chunk, not as big of a chunk as the, the 2000 pair of uh, uh, nucleotide chunk for the, the replicase. But the S protein, that's gonna be variable uh, just through natural selection. The, the endonucleus surprises me about it that having so much variability in such a large region. You know, the endonucleus is 21,000, roughly 21,000 nucleotides. So you're gonna have a lot of nu single nucleotide polymorphisms that are, that are taking place or a little bit of deletions, like I said, or some additions, but not big chunks. You don't see that normally, okay? So you're gonna have little variations that take place that, that either make the endonucleus a little bit better or make it a little bit worse. It may be in regions that are non-binding domains for the protein, so it really doesn't matter, which is probably a big part of that. Um, but it seems to me that this re region is important because it is a bat SARS virus for the MG strand. Remember, KY, in my theory, KY plus the MG makes the MN strand. And the MG has a, a strong component for SARS. The KY has a strong component of SARS, but they're different. One's for the S strand, one's for the, the replicase. The MN strand, which is the Wuhan strand, that has both. So that, that in theory, means that it's a stronger virus, okay? At least from looking at it from the genomic data level. Now, how that translates into the clinical environment, I don't know. But if you just look at the genome, it, it suggests that this could be a much stronger virus, okay? Now, the... Um, the probability of when you look at these viruses most of them are missing that endonuclease section okay and then there may have been by chance some mutation that's taking place natural selection you know in nature that's taking place that evolves this this section okay and uh, there, there's big chunks that are added.
it probably came from the KF strand, KF294457.1, because that has the biggest section in this area um, that was a bat SARS component. But again, that strand, strand did not have the S protein section, the 23,000 position. Okay, so it didn't have that, that S component. So it looks like the KF evolved into, into, into the MG strand. And it may have mixed with a, a, a um, another SARS strand that had a, a, um, a, let me rephrase that. I think the MG strand evolved from, from the KF strand. And that the K, and that MG strand evolved from the KY strand that created the Mu, Mu, the Muhan strand. But if we're looking at it from probability, okay, it seems odd that this would have happened in nature. When you see most of the most of these bat SARS, these bat SARS, you have one side that's that's missing one part of the genome the other you know strands are missing the other part of the genome what's the probability that they would both mix together and have have that that strain so how you know how how did it k kf evolve to mg then mg gets pieces big sections of 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 KY to make the the Wuhan and you can see evolutionary noise within other parts of the genome which is you know expected but not these big chunks it almost seems like Either there was a there was an evolutionary f freak thing that happened that allowed for big sections of different different RNA molecules to to switch and create a new unique novel RNA molecule or they were bioengineered because it's big ch sections, okay? And in, in molecular biology, we can cut DNA and copy paste them into genomes. Now, I don't know enough about the sequences on the right side and the left side of this 2000 pair, that this 2000 nucleotide range for the replicase and this region that's you know maybe about I don't know that, that's 2000 this, this is probably about 500 or so maybe more nucleotides for the S zone okay that's related to coding for the S protein if you look at the right or left flank of those regions, is there something that is similar to an endonuclease uh, signal that allows for the copy paste? Because you have to cut and, and those sticky ends have to be designed in such a way where they allow it to, to, to copy it in. That's a sign, a possible sign that that was not random selection but an actual engineered product. I don't know 
I don't know enough about that. That would be, I would think, the signature. Maybe people that are looking into this can figure that out. But the hypothesis is that it, it, it seems that it's a bat SARS virus that evolved from a KF strand that went to an M G strand and that MG strand was able to get pieces of a KY strand of bat SARS that evolved into an MN strand which is what we would call the Wuhan virus. And those big sections are really suspicious. Now it's possible that it was natural selection but I don't think it's very probable. Now, let me know what you think on that. I am siding on, I'm definitely, it's definitely bat SARS, the evolution of bat SARS. But I'm on, the, I'm on the fence that they're, you know, I'm not so sure that this wasn't bioengineered. And, and you add in with the, this probability, you add in that their bioweapons facility is in Wuhan. The Chinese bioweapons facility is in Wuhan. So is it possible that this was a bio accident? Either a worker wasn't safe with it and, got in and was able to contract the virus or it accidentally uh, leaked out of the lab. Who knows? But it's suspicious. You can, you can see when there's big evolutions in viruses, like there's chunks of it that are different, big chunks that are different, and then there's noise, right, as time goes on. These single nucleotide or, you know, kind of a few nucleotides in, in different zones of this 30,000 nucleotide genome is changing. So there's this noise of change which is expected. And these big chunks are these big evolutionary leaps, okay? But there was a big evolu there was a very big evolutionary leap that took place with the Wuhan virus from that missing component for most of the SARS viruses for the this 2000 pair that this 2000 nucleotide region and the S region, you know, some of them had them, some of them didn't, okay? But there was this big evolutionary leap where it's in the Wuhan virus and both of them are there. And that would mean that that, that organism was infected with, let's say, the MG, the MG strand the MG strand and then it was living with that, that, that virus, another virus comes in, which is the KY strand, and then somehow it's in the same cell, those two viruses, and they crossed over. There was a transfer of RNA that, that it was able to insert a piece of its RNA into the, into the genome that so happened to be in the, S, the most important region, which is the S region. I, it, when you add in that it was by, by a bio lab, you have to ask the question, the possibility that this is a bioweapon is a very real, real possibility. But so is natural selection. But we, this is this is serious. So let me know what you think. Try to prove me wrong. I'd much prefer to be proven wrong, and that you know that that uh, I'm I'm seeing this completely you know erroneously, and that I should not you know that, that this that this is not right and. I hope that's the case, but it does seem as though this there was an evolutionary component to to the Wuhan virus 
from bat SARS, but it, there was a big evolutionary leap. Now the question is how did that evolutionary leap happen? Was it a natural selection where an organism had multiple coronavi coronaviruses in the same tissue and they were able to exchange RNA material and create a new RNA molecule that was eventually repackaged and spread into, into um, the population of that species and then eventually jumped to, to humans? Or was it purposely put there? You know, I, I can't say for sure that it was not a bioweapon which I wish I could. It's very suspicious when you n know that their bio lab is their bioweapons facility. So let me know what you think. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.